Welcome to our video demonstration on Portlock Leapfrog. With the addition of several virtual hard disk and ISO file features, this utility will assist in creating a bootable virtual hard disk, or VHD, for native Windows deployment. For those that may not be completely familiar with the new VHD features implemented in Windows 7, this basically means we can now install Windows 7 to a VHD file and boot it on designated hardware without a virtual machine or hypervisor. With Portlock Leapfrog, we've actually taken this concept a step further and are giving users the ability to create Windows 7, Windows Server 2008 R2, and Hyper-V Server 2008 R2 bootable VHDs on systems such as Windows XP or Windows Server 2003 from an easy-to-use wizard. So you're no longer limited to using VHD technology on client systems with Windows Vista or later. This also provides users an excellent way to set up dual boot or even multi boot environments from a variety of support client operating systems without having to upgrade or repartition the physical hard disk. With that said, you'll see that the platform support for installing to a VHD includes both 32 bit and 64 bit versions of Windows 7 Ultimate and Enterprise, all versions of Windows Server 2008 R2, as well as Hyper V Server 2008 R2. So any one of these operating systems may be used for installing to a bootable VHD for native Windows deployment. Now the platforms that Portlock Leapfrog supports configuring the bootable VHDs to consists of a wider variety of Windows host operating systems. Everything from Windows XP to Windows Server 2008 R2. So you can now set up a dual boot environment with Windows Server 2008 R2 and Windows Server 2003 or Windows Vista and Windows 7 Enterprise or in the example I'm about to demonstrate, Windows XP and Windows 7 Ultimate. Any one of the supported VHD platforms can be set up to dual boot with a supported client operating system. Let's begin by booting to our Windows XP system. Here I have previously installed Portlock Leapfrog and saved it to the start menu. So with our Windows XP system up and running, I'll select the Start menu and then the Portlock Leapfrog icon. Here all of the features of Portlock Leapfrog are then accessible. As we are currently only interested in setting up a bootable Windows 7 VHD with our Windows XP system, we'll select the Next button. This takes us to the VHD Boot tab where you can see our first option available is to create a Windows 7 boot virtual disk. So let's go ahead and select this option. The Portlock Windows 7 Deployment Wizard is then started. This wizard will walk you through the necessary steps required for creating our VHD dual boot environment, as well as display system requirements that must be met. To begin, let's select the Next button. Here you can see the client or host operating system is Windows XP Service Pack 2, and we've met the minimum memory requirements for our install. The destination drive will be the location where the VHD is created. To change this location, select the Change button for all internal drives. However, keep in mind that USB devices are not currently supported. Once ready, select the Next button. Here the Portlock Leapfrog Wizard will display details regarding our bootloader configuration. These are the details that will make booting to a VHD possible. As you can see, the volume boot record is currently based upon Windows XP. The volume boot record will now be updated to support Windows 7. The same will apply for the configuration data store. Let's go ahead and move on to the next portion of the wizard. For our Windows 7 installation, we have three media type options we can choose to install Windows 7 from. We can choose to install from an ISO image, a WIM image, or from DVD. For this demonstration, I already have the Windows 7 DVD in my DVD tray, so I'll leave the option to install from DVD and select Next. The WIM image is then processed from the media type selected, which is used by Microsoft to deploy its latest operating systems. Here the wizard recognizes that it is the ultimate version of Windows 7 that I wish to install, and will allow me to continue without a warning. Next we need to establish a file name and size of the virtual hard disk that we will be creating and installing Windows 7 to. You can see from my previous selections in this wizard that the file will be created to the C drive of my Windows XP system. Now we'll go ahead and leave the default size of 20,000 megabytes and then select next. We've now gathered all the required information for our Windows 7 bootable VHD. To begin the VHD creation and installation process, select next. Portlock Leapfrog will then begin creating the VHD. 
This is a fixed VHD that is being created, as this is the only supported type by Portlock Leapfrog for the bootable VHD. Then once the VHD is complete, Portlock Leapfrog will automatically create and format an NTFS file system for the VHD. Once that is complete, the Windows 7 install process will then begin. As this can take a little while, depending on the size of the VHD, I'll go ahead and skip to the end. Now towards the end of the install, you can see the VHD has been created and formatted and the Windows 7 installation is almost complete. Once the install is finished, we will receive a message to remove our Windows 7 install DVD so that on reboot, we don't have to worry about booting into the DVD. We'll select OK and we are now finished. The bootable VHD has been added to the Windows Boot Manager and we can now boot into Windows 7. Go ahead and click Finish. Before we boot into our Windows 7 VHD, let's take a look at the Boot Manager utility by selecting the Boot Manager icon at the top of Portlock Leapfrog. Here you can see the Windows 7 VHD has been automatically added to the Windows Boot Manager. The Boot Manager will automatically assign the new VHD as the default OS. This way, when Windows 7 reboots during the completion of the install, it will not boot back into Windows XP. This can be changed back at any time. Now let's go ahead and close Portlock Leapfrog and reboot our Windows XP system. At System Boot Up, you will now see two entries displayed. You can see that Windows 7 is our current default OS, as it will automatically be started after 30 seconds. This default boot time can also be changed from Portlock Boot Manager as well. With Windows 7 Ultimate highlighted, let's boot to our VHD for the first time. Upon booting into the VHD for the first time, Windows 7 will begin updating the registry settings. From here, Windows 7 will install devices and apply system settings. Once this is complete, you will need to enter the rest of the Windows 7 settings, such as username, password, network settings, and so on. Once the settings are finalized, the Windows 7 install is complete and you now have your dual boot environment with the Windows 7 Ultimate VHD. Please be sure to check out the rest of the features not discussed in this video, such as attach, detach, and creating VHDs, mounting, dismounting, and burning ISO images, as well as the Portlock Leapfrog bootable CD, which is based upon the Windows pre-installation environment and can be used to hard boot a system. For further information, you can view the Portlock Leapfrog user guide or visit our website at www.portlock.com.